Hello, little baby. Lesh, this is John Lesh, first of his name, Lord of the Andals and the First Men. Most importantly, your father and the husband of Melissa Lesh, with whom I've been arguing routinely, trying to figure out the naming situation for you. And we disagreed on this vigorously because we couldn't agree on one. So finally we came up with Eleanor, the name of your 34th great grandmother, Eleanor of Aquitaine in direct succession up the line. Sorry, my bad. 29th great grandmother, uh, Eleanor of Aquitaine, looks like 1122 to 1204, lived a long, fruitful life. Eleanor of Aquitaine was one of the most powerful women in the Middle Ages. Duchess of Aquitaine in her own right, she would go on to become Queen Consort of France and later Queen of England. Eleanor was the oldest of three children of William X, Duke of Aquitaine. She was raised in one of Europe's most cultured courts and given an excellent education. The death of Eleanor's only brother and of her father in 1137 left her with a vast inheritance. At just 15 years old, she had suddenly become the most eligible heiress in Europe. She's beautiful, she's rich, she's got huge tracts of land. That same year, she married Louis, who shortly afterwards became king as Louis VII. Possessing a high-spirited nature, in fact, Eleanor was not popular with the staid northerners up in Paris. In 1147, Eleanor accompanied her husband on the Second Crusade, traveling to Constantinople and Jerusalem. The crusade was a failure, and relations between Eleanor and her husband, already poor, deteriorated even further. The marriage was annulled. As soon as the annulment was granted, Eleanor became engaged to Henry, Duke of Normandy and Count of Anjou who became King Henry II of England in 1154. For nearly two decades, Eleanor played an active part in the running of Henry's empire, traveling backwards and forwards between their territories in England and France. In 1173, Eleanor's sons rebelled against their father, and the queen supported her sons. Henry put down the rebellion and confined Eleanor. After Henry's death in 1189, his eldest son, Richard I, ordered his mother's release. Catherine Hepburn played Eleanor of Aquitaine in the 1968 film The Lion in Winter, while Glenn Close played her in the 2003 version of that same film. Coincidentally, Glenn Close also played Iris in The Natural, a 1984 film made to make you think it's just the best baseball film of all time, but is in fact also a remarkably well-directed allegory for Homer's Odyssey. In that film, Glenn Close as Iris, the allegorical goddess of the rainbow, represents the influence of light in Roy Hobbs' Conquest of the Darkness. This may or may not have been how your mother and I settled upon Iris as an excellent middle name. Two of Eleanor of Aquitaine's most well-documented children are Richard Coeur de Lion, Richard the Lionheart, and <clears throat> John the First, King of England, um, from which you descend. Now, King John of England was a very unpopular king as the son of Eleanor of Aquitaine. When he reigned, the nobles of England all got together and made him sign a document recognizing their rights. Uh, the document was called the Magna Carta. This is in of itself a good thing because the Magna Carta provided the basis for many of the rights that we enjoy today as Americans under the United States Constitution. But he never would have had to sign it uh, if he didn't tick off all the nobles in the first place. Not the best reputation who most people in America know from the cartoon Robin Hood. gives me a feeling of power! Power! Forgive me a cruel chuckle. <laughs> power. Mm. And in that movie, Sir Hiss the Snake talked to King John about his relationship with his mother. And how well King Richard's crown sits on your noble brow. Doesn't it? A king Richard? But I, I told you never to mention my brother's name. A, a, a mere slip of a forked tongue, your majesty. 
We're in this plot together, if you don't mind my saying so. And remember, it was your idea I hypnotized him. And I, I know. And sent him off on that crazy crusade. Ha ha! Ha ha! Much to the sorrow of the Queen Mother. Yes! Mother! Mother always did like Richard best. <laughs> Clearly had mummy issues. May no child of yours have mummy issues with you. When people say Eleanor now, they always think of Eleanor Roosevelt, which is cool, but, you know, a little bit cliche. I don't know. Now, a couple weeks ago, there was an article in the Star Tribune that detailed baby names that people were using. And... One of the reasons I thought Eleanor was cool from a guy who had to go through life with a name like John um, is because Eleanor was uncommon, okay? And it's an old name, but no one names their kids Eleanor anymore, which is why I thought it was cool. And I wanted to have a common name because I was John. This article came out and it said that now you were, Eleanor was like a trending name. And I thought that's not cool at all. Okay, so what I ended up doing was we came up with a whole list of other names. But your mother still insisted upon Eleanor. We were in huge disagreement about that. So tonight there was a fundraiser for the House Democratic Caucus. And at the caucus was a guy named Garrison Keeler who you don't really know because you're a baby and don't know anything. You haven't even been born yet. But he's a pretty well-known guy, pretty, like, iconic Minnesotan, you know, kind of the, the Mark Twain of, uh, of his age. Garrison Keillor's variety show is nationally syndicated and very popular with folks outside Minnesota. So naturally, a movie was planned. And when a Prairie Home Companion was filmed here in St. Paul in 2005, the actor John C. Riley, who played Lefty in the movie, rented a house in the Como Park neighborhood, a house which later became the Lesh household, where you will grow up and, like your sister Alice, be raised on The Simpsons. So you see how everything in St. Paul comes full circle, including Garrison Keillor. It's been an uneventful week in Badger Falls where the women are robust, the men are pink-cheeked, and the children are pink-cheeked and robust. <laughs> what the hell's so funny? At the Apple Biscuit Cafe, where the smiles are free, don't you know, Sven Inquist studied the menu, and finally he ordered the same thing he has every day. <laughs> I said to him, hey, uh, my wife and I are having this argument about what name to name the baby. By the way, your due date was yesterday, and you're still not here, so what, what's going on? But I said, we're, we're having trouble over the, na over the name. And he's like, well, what names are you talking about? I'm like, well, my wife wants Eleanor, um, and I um, don't really want Eleanor because it's a common name. Okay, I'm like, well, can you do a little introduction for the unborn baby, Garrison? It's his thing, you know, he does this variety show and and he did he did the the introduction so here it is Eleanor Lesh Eleanor Lesh oh she's young and she's fresh Eleanor Lesh what a beauty what a beautiful name oh, welcome to the world Eleanor Lesh so you can see that the ongoing dispute between your mother and I was decided by Garrison Keeler okay so you were essentially named by Garrison Keillor, not really by your parents, because he's the one who made the ultimate call because he did this video naming you Eleanor, making the decision. So there it is. You were named by Garrison Keillor. Your mother will be happy. Welcome to the world, little baby, Eleanor Lesh.